Happy Friday, everyone. We got a fun little burner for you guys today. A uh, little couplet with a ascending and descending ladder. So we're gonna have some fun today with this one. So enjoy, break it down, and let's see where it takes us into the weekend. Before we get to that, we'll be having you guys side lunge for 10, alternating with a two second pause per side. Sumo squat for three, goblet squat for three to five, one arm dumbbell deadlift for three per side, and a jump squat for 20 seconds. Two to three rounds there. Then we move into the broad and medium, which is looking for balance and some jumping work. So it's kind of a weird kind of combo for you guys. Side scale raise for five a side. A little lateral T jump for 20 seconds. Front scale raise for five a side. Single leg RDL jump for 20 seconds per side. And then a back scale raise for five per side. So a nice little piece there to work some balance, just kind of balance some things out and uh, just have some fun with some skills. Two or three rounds, and then you're gonna practice the thruster and the kettlebell swing, get you guys ready to go for the work set. So the workout for you guys today, 25, 20, 15, 10, five, dumbbell thruster, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, dumbbell swing, kettlebell swing. So how this goes, 25 thrusters, fifth, or sorry, five swings, 20 thrusters, 10 swings, and then taking it all the way to the end where it's five thrusters and 25 swings. Cool little work set. Depending on what you have access to at home, you can do the double weight for the thruster, just take single, single dumbbell and swing for the kettlebell or the dumbbell swing. Or if you have two different sets, stay lighter on the thruster and heavier on the kettlebell swing slash dumbbell swing. So you can experiment with that depending on what you have access to and just take it from there. See how you're feeling and go from there, all right? Let's get you ready, have some fun today, and get you ready to go. All right, let's get you guys warmed up. Let's get those feet under the hips. We'll take the arms big and tall overhead. We're gonna reach over to one side. We're gonna reach over to the other side. Come back to center, bring the hands to the hips. So just take the hips around a few times, nice and easy. Make sure things feel good today. Go the other way, nice and easy on those circles. Good. From here, we'll step our feet out nice and wide to our sumo stance where we'll take a toe and a toe. Take our hand to the sky. We'll pull back into that nice dynamic triangle. Stand tall. Then we're gonna pull back into that dynamic triangle again. Stand tall. Then we're gonna turn the toes, big high five. Turn it to the other side, set and then pull back and tall. And then pull back and tall. Turn those toes, big high five. We're gonna keep that other hand up to the sky. We're gonna pull back and rotate into that windmill. Taking it as deep as you feel comfortable. Stand, little five. And then we'll pull back in that windmill. And stand tall, big high five. And then take it all the way down to the floor as we touch those toes. Walk up the shins, come down, plant the hands, step back into our plank. Then we're gonna pull back up into that down dog, back into that plank, into that down dog, into that plank, and one more time into that down dog, and into that plank. We'll tiptoe those feet up, roll ourselves up, big stretch. Big reach, reach, come down. Let's get you fired up, everyone. All right, pause the video if you want to do some more gentle stuff, like some lizard lunging perhaps with rotation, hip presses, anything along those lines. Take that down for yourself. I'm gonna walk you through that top piece and get you underway. So we're gonna start off our day with some side lunges. So I'm gonna stand, nice wide stance, toes slightly turned out. I'm gonna take my hip down to my heel or in that direction. Doesn't matter if you can't quite get that deep, just shoot for that as a target. So we're gonna take the hip to the heel, keeping the chest up high. My knee tracks the toe the entire time. And then I push through that leg to come back up. I take it down at the bottom. I'm gonna hold for two seconds and then push to the top. So I'm gonna turn to the side profile so you guys can see a little bit more from that hip angle. So trying to keep my chest up as high as I can, pulling the hip towards the heel, staying nice and solid here, giving myself that little pause in the bottom, and then again, taking that hip down, focusing on that squat mechanic of trying to stay as upright as we can, that knee track in the toe, and that hip shooting towards the heel.
from my side lunge, I'm gonna go right into my sumo squat. So my feet are gonna come in a little bit, so I have a wider stance still than my regular squat stance, but I'm gonna push those knees out to the side a little bit more. My big toe stays down, my feet stay flat, and I try and stay as upright as I can, just like I was in my side lunge. So the only thing we have to think about is just a little bit more push out of the knees than our average squat, and that's just gonna help keep those knees firing to the side and keeping things nice and strong. After my sumo squat, I'm gonna grab a single dumbbell or even kettlebell. I'm gonna hold it under my chin in my regular stance and work through some goblet squats. So I'm gonna hold that dumbbell close, gentle knee out pressure so my knees just track the toes. I'm still focused on staying balanced through my midfoot, so right where my laces are, but having that full flat foot contact. So my big toes down, my heels down, but my weight is sitting right in the middle of that foot. And that just keeps me nice and balanced and nice and upright. From there, I'm gonna work on a single arm deadlift. It's exactly as it sounds. So you can do this sumo style or you can do a conventional. So I'm gonna show you both. I'm gonna show you the conventional from the side so you can see where my dumbbell is. I'm holding this position. I take the hips back and I just lower it down below the knee maintaining that good back position and stand tall. The dumbbell and then the conventional is to the side. The other hand can be wherever we want it to be, but just not on our body. So if you're gonna choose to do that sumo, the dumbbell will just come between the feet. The back position is the same, the hip angle is the same, except the dumbbell is gonna come between the feet so my feet may go a little bit wider. I'll do three per side, so I'm just gonna switch sides of the hand. I'm working on staying as square as I can through my body position. Right after that single arm deadlift, I'm gonna go into our, our jump squat for 20 seconds. So my regular stance, just like the goblet, same criteria apply, except we have three different variations. So I'm going to squat. First variation is just an air squat, or an air squat with a slightly faster stand up, a little bit more acceleration out of the bottom. My second variation, is that quick turnover, which might cause me to come off of my heels a bit at the top so I get a little bit more acceleration, but then I pull down quickly into that good, strong deceleration into the bottom of my squat. The last version, I actually leave the ground a bit, so I'm gonna come down with that good squat, drive, and pull back down. So I'm trying to open my hips up tall, open up my knees, and then pull back down, maintaining the same stance I had as I was doing my first opening squat. Play around with one of those three, all three, it's up to you. Whatever kind of suits your needs the most, perhaps you do three rounds of the work set and you build as you go. Have some fun with it, you guys. It's your warm up, so make it yours. Quick recap though, we have a side lunge for 10 alternating and a two second pause per side. Sumo squat for three, goblet squat for three to five, one arm deadlift, three per side, jump squat for 20 seconds, two to three rounds. Take that down, have some fun with it, and just play. Have some fun, feel your body out for the week. Our next phase of work is gonna situate with a little bit of balancing work, so it's gonna be a little tough, but we'll have some fun with it. Our first exercise is our side scale raise. So I'm gonna shift my weight to my balancing leg. My body's gonna be as tall and upright as I can. My other leg is gonna be doing the lifting. The toe is gonna be pointed so the top of the foot points towards the front of the the, the room. So I'm nice and set here. My hands can be wherever they need to be. I'm going to lift my leg up to where I can control and come back down. So it doesn't matter how high we get it, but I want the musculature to do the lift. Okay? So we're lifting that leg with the glute, with that outside portion of the leg, and we're taking it up as high as we can uh, with control. So we shouldn't get this like, yeah, and then fall. It should be controlled all the way up and then control all the way down. Once I do five per side, I'm gonna shift into my lateral ski jump. So I'm gonna get my foot balanced and set. I'm gonna use that arm momentum to kind of get that swing and jump. Or if I'm not a jumper, I'm going to step and step and step so that foot doesn't leave the ground until the other one is on it. Or I can use this foot as a drag and I can drag that foot across. Drag that foot so I have stability across the whole process, and 
and I'm not going too quick. Our goal is to create momentum and control it. Create and control it. So how fun with that, play with it. You got 20 seconds of steady state, but take a moment per jump just to control that lateral energy. After those jumps, we're gonna move into our front scale. So I'm gonna get myself balanced again, finding my favorite foot. I'm gonna point my toe out to the front. The hands can go where they need to be for balance. And I'm going to engage and lift. Again, with the front scale, same as the side, we're trying to maintain control through the whole motion. So I'm not kicking up with momentum and losing control of the down. The other thing we have to control with this is that balancing leg. So the leg that is kind of on the ground, doing the balancing, we only want to lift as high as we can keep this leg straight. It's very easy for us to lift too high and let that leg buckle. So we have to keep it super straight and strong and only lift our leg to where we can do that as well. Right after our front scales per side, we'll move into our single leg RDL jump. And again, we have three variations for you for this as well. So we pick our favorite leg for balance. The leg that's gonna extend back off the ground, the same arm is gonna reach forward. And that's the same for each variation. So that doesn't change. The variation is the intensity and the momentum we create changes. So variation one is more of just a balancing act. We load the leg, we find that position, we come up, and we just come to the standing high knee, and we get that balance. The next variation, we pull back, and get a little momentum and lift, and that knee coming through lifts me off my heel a little bit, and then I come down for control. And the last variation, we continue with the ankle pump. So what happens, I load, I swing the leg through, and I finish with that little ankle pop and lift. So take your time, build those things up. It all stems from that strong foundation of balance. So don't jump right, don't literally jump right to the jump if you struggle with that balance position. Build that up so you build yourself up well. Finally, our last exercise on this list is our back scale raise. Our back scale raise is very similar to the RDL, but slightly different. The RDL, we hinge and that knee softens. Our body stays a little bit more upright. The back scale, we keep this leg a little straighter and we get more of a hinge. So my entire body tips forward and faces my chest to the ground. So I pull that leg back, I keep that leg straight, and my body is pretty much flat as can be throughout the entire process. The knee, the balancing leap, knee is still soft, but I'm not bending into that knee as much as I would in that RDL. So please remember that. It's gonna be a little different feel, but it's very similar. If you really like those RDLs, I have no issues with you doing some more of those because it will be beneficial. We're just changing it up today to work on a little bit different balance. But if you want to use the RDL instead, please be my guest. Quick recap, we have a side scale, five per side. It's lateral ski jump for 20 seconds. Uh, just nice dynamic movement. Front scale for five a side. Single leg RDL jump, 20 seconds per leg. Again, don't rush those. You may only get like two or three jumps in there depending on your balance. So don't rush those, take your time. Back scale raise for five a side, two to three rounds. Rock that, have fun with it, work that balance, that kind of the funky stuff through the hips. It'll get those legs and hips really fired up for what's to come. Pause the video and take it down. We're gonna jump into the two movements in our work set now, which is the thruster and the kettlebell swing or the dumbbell swing. So with the thruster, I have two dumbbells today to, to demo. I'm just gonna clean the dumbbells up to my shoulders in the front rack position. My feet are gonna be in my squat stance, and I'm just gonna to turn to the side to in my back position. First things first, we're gonna keep a nice strong front rack position so there's a little pressure in the dumbbell. And then we have to execute with a good front squat. So we focus on hip to heel, weight through the midfoot, and we stand driving through that squat. So the only thing missing there is the press. So what I'm gonna do, execute that good squat, Drive press and use the momentum of my squat to drive the dumbbells overhead. So it's squat and drive. And I want to use as little arm as possible. 
possible in that. As they get more fatigued, the arm might have to do more, but we want to use the momentum, and then the arms finish that momentum by continuing it onto the top overhead position. We want to focus on that good front squat, and then that good overhead position, nice and locked out overhead. From there, we have our kettlebell swing or dumbbell swing. I'm gonna pick one of my dumbbells that I use my thruster for. Variation number one, I'm holding the bell, two hands by the bell. I'm gonna get set up, my feet are in roughly about a squat stance. I'm gonna pull my hips back into that good hinge and stand through those legs like I was gonna jump onto a box or tuck jump or broad jump. I stand aggressive and I let that kettlebell or dumbbell rise up to that end range. The legs and the hips do all the work. I want to try and keep my feet as flat as possible for as long as possible. If I kind of come off my heels a bit, it's okay, but we want to try and stay as flat as we can because that's going to give us more power and more balance as we control that dumbbell or kettlebell in that upper portion of the swing. Another variation, we can hold it like a golf club, so both hands on the bell. So I stand in that same position, same mechanism of body movement, so I pull the hips, standing tall, quick aggressive hips, keeping the hands just above the knee the whole time. And my last option is that single arm swing. So I hold it with one dumb or one hand, and I get the same mechanism, and I work that good swing all the way through, and then I would change it and work on that hip position. I really like these. They're really nice. They're a change of pace. The only kicker would be with this style of work set, you'll just do half the work on one side, half the work on the other side. You just split the reps up if you're choosing to do that single arm. The hips don't know the difference. The only difference would be your grip on the one side getting tired and then flipping it to the other side. So split it up the best you can if you're gonna choose that single arm variation. Again, quick recap of the workout. 25 thrusters, five swings. 20 thrusters, 10 swings. 15 thrusters, 15 swings. 10 thrusters, 20 swings. Five thrusters, 25 swings, done. Nice descending, ascending ladder of thrusters and kettlebell swings. Play with this. Remember, if you're gonna choose, if you have two different loads at home, lighter for the thruster, heavier for the swing, have fun, you guys. Enjoy this one. Work for quality. Let it lead you into the weekend the right way. Slightly tired in the legs. Stairs may be a little tough after this one, but it should be a fun time. Have a great day. If I don't see you tomorrow, have a fantastic and safe weekend, everyone. We'll see you on Monday again for our fantastic work set. But if I see you tomorrow, we got one more little bit of interval work for you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.